Okay, so I finally have Windows 10 running on Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, if I right click here and go to System, I don't know what this is going to show us, but it might give you an idea that it's running on the Pi. Uh, it's running with one gig of RAM. Uh, currently, uh, if I plug in an Ethernet cable, I don't get internet, but I have got another way of getting internet. Um, and uh, it's not it's not that straightforward, uh, although what's happened, uh, Marsan, who, uh, and I'll put a link to his Twitter uh, and all the downloads and everything, he's made available the, uh, the USB stick, uh, all the content on there. So basically it's the system that he installed on his Pi. You need an SD card to boot from, and I'll go through that again in a minute, but, uh, but it is up and running. So you can see here, ARM Cortex-A72, one gig of RAM it recognizes. This is a four gig Pi, but it, in this configuration, it only works with one gig. Uh, the OS build, he's saying it could work with some uh, later builds, um, but uh, you need a Pi 3 to be able to compile it. And there's all the instructions he's put on his Twitter feed. Uh, and so you can see that if you want to have a look at it. But let's go through. Uh, the display I can't change, but it's on 1920 by 1080, so I'm happy with that. It comes up as 64 hertz, uh, and you can't change that either, um, but again, I'm not worried about that. Sound uh, isn't working at the moment, uh, although I have got a USB sound card, which I can have a look at and see if that will work. Uh, and you can see, what does it say on storage? That'll be interesting. So, so I'm running it from a 32 gig stick, but it shows up, yeah, oh well. Uh, so, what's tablet? Oh yeah, tablet mode, multitasking. So you can see that all of this is proper Windows 10, but it is obviously very early on and it needs to be played around with, but the more people who have it, the more people can sort of experiment with it and see what's going on, and I think, I mean, although it is it is definitely slow, but it's actually faster than I thought it was going to be. Uh, and so I can scroll here with two fingers on the trackpad. You can see the Xbox app is there. But obviously a lot of these things will need an internet connection, which this currently doesn't have. Uh, if I click on Documents, you can see that comes up in the normal way. Because it's a USB stick image, you can put it in your computer and just drag things into it. So if you want files to be on there, even without the internet, so maybe you could sort of sideload apps onto it. Uh, and I don't know what it's gonna be compatible with at this stage, but you can see that all of this, well, there's nothing really on there because it's a clean install of Windows. Uh, and then all of this works, safely remove hardware. So it says not connected. I'll, I'll show you how I can change that in a second. Uh, so actually we were setting the time and date or will that happen? Maybe that will happen when I give it internet. Let's try that. So to get the internet, what I'm gonna do is plug in a USB hub. So I'm gonna momentarily unplug the keyboard uh, and plug in, I've got a four port USB hub with an ethernet adapter, a USB ethernet adapter. And is my keyboard back on? Yeah, so this is all going through the hub. And it should, it does. It says internet access is there now. We're setting up a USB receiver. I think that might be the, the keyboard device that I plugged in, but that's working. Uh, so control center, there you go. So let's, well, let's just try and set that while it's doing nothing else. So adjust date and time. It's gonna do it. I might go into settings and do it differently. There is a, a warning you get uh, where you can prioritize apps or system resources. And I just hit cancel. And I probably should have prioritized uh, system resources to the, to the processor because I haven't got any other apps. Oh, and now it's gone. So I have, and this does happen, it does seem to sort of respring uh, every now and then. But more when I've got the extra devices plugged into it. Now, I don't know if this is because I'm using too low a power supply, and I'll explain why that is. Yeah, I think what I'll do is I'll reboot it, and I'll explain exactly how uh, I've had to configure it to get it all working. Okay, so first thing 
you need to do if you want to follow these instructions is go onto Marsan's Twitter and you can see how to install Windows 10. Uh, there's two methods here. I went for the simpler one because I don't have a Raspberry Pi 3, which you need a Raspberry Pi 3 to set up a Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, and you also need an on-the-go device, and I'll show you mine in a minute. If you haven't got one of those, then you can't get uh, a USB device plugged in because the USB ports don't work. You only can use the USB port, which is a power socket on the Pi. So if you scroll down, uh, you the one thing you need to do, uh, or one of the things you need to do, is go to GitHub and download this firmware. Uh, and basically all you're doing is unzipping that firmware. I've already downloaded it before, so I'm going to have two of those. Uh, so if I open that up, you'll see that it's that one. So you would unzip that and put the contents of that on a micro SD card. And that's what your Pi is going to boot from. So basically copy the contents of that over to your micro SD card. Then what you need to do is go back and you can follow the more in-depth instructions that are on here. Um, but I, I had a look at it because I, I fully intended to do it that way. Um, but not having a Pi 3 would, would have stopped it. But I was going to follow it through anyway. But if you go to download these uh, Windows 10 installation files, there's actually a load of drop-down options. And I didn't really know exactly which one to pick. Uh, but then as I scroll down, yeah, part of this, and if you scroll down, there is a, there you go. For people who are too lazy or do not own a Raspberry Pi 3, I'm providing a download link of uh, to a backup of my USB drive. So this is basically his Windows installation on a USB stick. So you're just downloading that, and this is a mega upload that you have to download it from. I found you had to sign in because you needed more data than they give you on a free account. But all I did was I signed in on my iPad to a free account, then went back in. Uh, I'm on a Mac here. I had to use the Chrome browser because it needed a bigger buffer, uh, but then it downloads it. Well, if I, I can click on it anyway, and it will show you what it looks like. So it comes up like this. Uh, there is a readme file, which is obviously tiny. Uh, and then there is the actual download of Windows, which is 8 gig unzipped. So I downloaded it. And then on my desktop, it looks like that. I then unzipped it, and it looks like that. So it's an image. It needs to be on a FAT32 USB stick. Uh, I use it on an SD card and a USB adapter, same principle, but a 32, uh, FAT32 format uh, USB. And so to write that, I thought you just dragged it on, but you actually use Belena Etcher. Um, so use Belena Etcher and then you would select that image uh, and then write that to your USB. And that's where your operating system is running. The other one, the SD card, is just a little boot system. And I'll show you how it boots up in a second. So when Belena Etcher loads up, going pretty slow at the moment, this is a nearly a 10-year-old Mac. But I like to keep things going. So select image. Obviously, you would put a USB stick in here. So that is the image, the WA image. Hit open. Uh, and then you would select your card and then hit flash and then a short while later it's done. Okay, so this is how I've got it set up. So power is coming from a USB power adapter and this is USB to micro USB because that's the connection on my on-the-go hub, which is what this thing is. Uh, so then it's going down the cable and through a micro USB to USB-C adapter into the Pi. That's how it's getting its power. The boot system is coming from the micro SD card here. So that's how it's booting the initial part. Once it's done that, it then switches over to the USB stick, which is plugged into this hub. So that's how it's getting Windows to run. And then in my other USB socket, I've got a little keyboard adapter, because you can see at the top, I've got a Kensington keyboard. And, uh, and that's how it runs. Once it's up and running, I do do something a little different, and I'll show you how I do that. Okay, so this is me trying to simplify it, but it doesn't really look that way. Uh, so the other two things that I've added, I have plugged the uh, the Ethernet cable into an adapter, which is also plugged into this USB hub. I've moved the keyboard over to the USB hub, uh, and then the USB hub takes its signal from there, uh, and then that also plugs into a power adapter as well. So this has a separate plug as well. Um, so it's a bit of a complicated way of doing it, 
but uh, it's the only way I could try and get a set because it wasn't Windows wasn't recognizing the Ethernet socket on the Pi. I figured if I used a USB one, and it did pick it up and it did show the internet, but it does seem to uh, make things a little bit less stable. So I'll do more tests anyway. So if you've got any suggestions or any ways of getting things to run uh, or different ways of getting the internet or if you've managed to get the Wi-Fi to work, obviously we can use the USB stick that Windows is running on and put drivers on that stick. I was also thinking of partitioning the uh, micro SD card so that you had the boot and then the Windows operating system on that and I wondered if that would work. Anyway, any suggestions would be appreciated, but uh, great work by Marsan. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.